Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're going to be doing a three point test cross example problem. So the easiest way to learn how to do these is by repetition and practicing and doing multiple ones. Um, they're, they're not too bad once you get the steps down and slowly work through them. And so we did an example in lecture and now we'll do this example as a separate one and talk about it and so forth. So let's hop right into it right here. So again, I'll go over this problem just like all the other example problems I do. Do it yourself first to see where you're struggling. Of course, you'll, you'll hear me say it and be like, oh, of course, that's how you do it and so forth. But if you don't realize where you're stuck on these problems, you won't be able to figure out how to fix it if you're going to have an example like this on an exam. Alrighty, so here, uh, so in Snickerdoodle, so you know, cookies, uh, the cinnamon, sugar, and egg loci are linked. In this problem, uh, cinnamon is CN, uh, sugar is S, and egg is EG. Again, you can make up any problem here. And remember, if they're linked, they're all located on the same chromosome close together. The purpose of this is to figure out the order and how far away they are from each other. So with recessive mutations, CN, S, and EG. So the wild type ones would all be plus signs here, respectively. You cross a homozygous wild type snickerdoodle, so plus, 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 with a snickerdoodle that has all three mutant phenotypes, so CN, S, EG. So that one is the parent cross. You then test, so all of these would result in homozygous, uh, I mean heterozygous individuals. Uh, you then test cross the progeny, uh, so test cross. What's a test cross here? So you have the wild type, so one of each version here. Technically, this would be plus, 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 C, N, C, N, S, S, E, G, E, G. I just didn't want to write all the letters. So here you'd have plus C, N, uh, plus S, and then plus E, G. Remember writing these uh, slashes here is same thing. Um, and then you do a test cross here. So a test cross means you're crossing it with the recessive individual. So then you'd be CN, CN, cross S, S, cross EG, EG. So that would be your next, that's what the test cross is. So this heterozygous individual cross this one. Remember, there are a few ways uh, to write this. So you can write it like that, which is a little harder to read, but you can also write it as uh, plus, plus, plus. And then the other chromosome would be CN, S, E, G. You can write one bar or you could write two bars. And then here would be the other cross. So CN, uh, S, E, G. So this means, this, so this right here means the same thing as this right here. Um, and being able to write it like this, helps you see where crossing over events could occur. So if a crossing over event occurred on this one, they're all gonna be the same. So we're worried about the crossing over events that occur on this one. And again, writing it like this, you can see how CN could switch with the, um, the recessive could switch with the dominant here and then make CN plus plus on one chromosome. All right, um, so the results of the test cross are shown below. So then we have all of the results here. Construct a genetic map for these three loci based on your results. So even though I wrote these as CNSEG, that's not the actual order. We have to look at the results to figure out the order here. So, you know, it could be SCNEG. And we can look at these number of progeny here to figure that out. Um, so first we construct a genetic map, then determine the coefficient of coincidence and interference for these loci. So a two-part problem here. Uh, so here are, this is the data. Uh, so first here, uh, remember this is, might be where you want to pause it. So I set up the problem for you. I might have explained a little bit beforehand, but I didn't give you any uh, big answers away. So here's all the data. Try this yourself and see if you can make the map and then calculate the coefficient of coincidence and the interference for these loci as well. I'm going to get right into it though. So here we go. So step one is we want to figure out which one is in the middle. So to figure out which one in the middle, we have to figure out what's the double crossover event, what's the single crossover event, and which ones are the non-recombinants. So the easiest ones are to figure out the non-recombinants. Those are the ones here with the largest number. So let's do the non-recombinants in red. So non-recombinant, so 54 is a large number, 
and non-recombinant. Another way you can confirm this is the non-recombinant is the parent. So you look at these, these are the parents. If you if I'd scroll up here, these are the same as the parent. So um, so plus 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 and then C N S E G. They're similar to the parents. So those are also a way to double check the non-recombinants. Next one you want to figure out are the double crossovers. Let's do the double crossovers in blue. So double crossovers are the smallest numbers. So DXO is how I abbreviate double crossover. So double crossover is, remember, when you have, you know, um, a set of genes here. So let's just say ABC. And then uh, let's just do recessive version down here. Double crossover event is where you get a crossover event occurring here and a crossover event occurring here. So the final result then is an A little b C, so the middle gene changes spots. And then here would be the dominant form, and well, this would be a lowercase c, this is a capital C. C is not a good one to use. Um, but here, you get an exchange of that middle gene, and so that's rare. So you have to have a crossover event here and a crossover event here. The second part of this problem is going into the interference. So one crossover event could interfere with the other crossover event depending on how far apart these genes are from each other. And that's why we calculate the interference later. But here, very rare, very tough to do. So these are always the lowest numbers in the numbers of progeny. So you can write them out as well. Okay, that's uh, step one. And then all the other ones, these are all uh, single crossovers. And I write these as SXO single crossover. So you can just fill it in easily like that. So that's step one. Step two is now to figure out the middle. So how do we figure out the middle? So you want to look at, you want to compare the non-recombinants with the double crossovers. And you want to find which two are the, stay the same. So one parent here is CNSEG. So we go down here to the double crossovers and we see which one of these two we can match up in one of the double crossovers. All right, here is CNS. So the only one that changed here was EG. Okay, let's look at the other one. Plus, 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 you get plus, plus EG. So this suggests that EG could be the middle uh, because these two are the same. Remember, this plus is for CN, this plus is for S. Everything here is the same order. So these ones match these ones, and these ones match these ones. So that suggests there's an exchange between EG and plus. And if we imagine EG was over here, well, this one would be plus, and this one would be EG, then you'd have an exchange, and EG would be up here, and then plus would be down here. So we just figured out the middle. So here, middle is EG. So now we can put together, you know, an idea of the order. Now you don't know the exact order because it could be either direction. You don't know which is the left one, which is the right one. So, but roughly here, the order, let's just do it as CN, EG is the middle, that's all we know, S. It could be S, EG, CN as well. But this is the order. So when we make our genetic map, now we gotta determine the distances between each of these. And that's what we use these numbers for. And next step is to calculate the recombination frequencies between the two different crossovers. So that's now I recommend rewriting this up here in the correct order. Now it will help you see the crosses. And all you need to do is write the first parent cross. So now we have plus, 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 that's one. And then the other one, now we know our order is CN, EG, S. So now we're looking at the ends. So a crossover event occurring on this end and a crossover event occurring on this end. So if this CN crossed over and came up here, we'd have CN plus plus, and then we'd have plus EGS. And we should be able to find that over here. So now we are looking for CN plus plus. So CN plus plus is this one right here. So this is, then I write CN, um, well, this is a crossover event between CN and EG. And then the other one we have is plus EGS. Plus EGS. There it is. So this is also a single crossover event between CN and EG. 
The other one we're looking for, I guess I'll change to green here uh, just to make it a little easier, is the crossover event right here on the other end. Uh, so this one would then be plus plus S. So plus plus S. See if we can find that. Plus plus S right there. So now this one would be defined as a crossover event between EG and S. And then we also have CN, EG, and then if this one uh, crosses up, we would have the last one here. So CN plus EG would be the last one here. So the plus is up there. So CN uh, EG plus CN EG plus. So this one's also the other crossover between EG and S. So now we have our crossovers. We know which ones relate to what, and now we can use these to calculate our recombination frequencies. So uh, if we go down here, we do the you know, CN, EG, that's the first one up here, uh, recombination frequency. Remember, recombination frequencies is equal to the number of recombinants divided by the total. So we're given the total right here. So for CN to EG, we do, we, you always include the double crossovers as well. So you do 3 plus 4 plus 30 plus 27. And that's all over 211. And to solve this quickly is 30.3. Well, it's 0 0.303. And then you times that by 100, you get a percent or 30.3%. Boom, not too bad. And now we do the other one here. So EG to S recombination frequency. Again, number of re um, recombinants divided by total. So it's 3 plus 4 plus 16 plus 22, all over 211. This one equals 0 0.166 or 16.6%. Again, you'd be timesing this by 100% right here to turn it into a percentage. Wow, we got it. Now we can draw our little map here. So if we were to draw, you know, we're looking at the order of genes, CN, EG to S. So CN to EG is 30.3 map units. And then EG to S is 16.6 .6 map units. And then you can do CN to S, which is 30.3 plus 16.6 .6 map, well, which would equal then um, 46.9 map units. Now the actual you know, distances between here might not be exactly this. This gives you a rough idea uh, because this is all statistics. And so now we can, you, can, you could draw out you know, the different units here. So we have CN and then that's about 30.3 EG and then S is a little closer. And then you know this one is 30.3. This one is then 16.6, .6, and from CN to S is 46.9. So there we drew our genetic map. And so here, the first construct a genetic map for these three loci based on your results. If, that all, if that's all the question asked, you'd be done right here. However, I take this a step forward and I ask you then, then determine the coefficient of coincidence and interference for these loci. So remember, this is determining the interference of this middle double crossover event because one crossover event can block the other one just by being a bunch of tangled chromosomes. Um, so here to do that, so let's go to the interference down here now. So to calculate the interference, what you do is you take the two recombination frequencies times each other. So, so CN to EG recombination frequency, EG to S recombination frequency, that's 0 0.166 times 0 0.033. So point, well not 033, 303 times 0.166. So this then equals 0 0.05, we could just call it 0 0.05, it's technically 03, um, but 0 0.05 works fine. Now, what is this number here? This is the expected double crossover frequency. Now, what that means is that so we expect 5% of the total crossovers to be double crossovers. Now we can compare if we actually got that in our data. 
And that's what this, what we're calculating here. So we calculate the coefficient of coincidence in the interference. So first we need the expected. So we know our total is 211 and we expect 0.05 or 5% of them to be double crossover. So you simply just take 0 0.0503 times 211 and that equals 10.6 expected double crossovers. So that's expected. Now we go up here and we look, what's our actual? Actual is three plus four double crossovers, so seven. So again, uh, seven actual double crossovers here. Now we can actually calculate the interference. So we expected 10.6, we only got seven. So interference is equal to one minus, so here it's called the coefficient of coincidence, I'll abbreviate that COC, that equals one minus, and the coefficient of coincidence is just the actual divided by the expected. Uh, so here, seven over 10.6, and that equals 0.3397, or what that means, roughly a 34% chance of expected double crossovers will not occur. So oh, there's our final result. Uh, so here we calculated the interference and we also calculated the genetic map for this problem. So lots of stuff here. And again, it's it looks like a lot, but if you break it down step by step like we did here, it's not as bad as it sounds. And you know, three point test crosses are all about practice, 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 and knowing the steps and what to look for next. And then if you're ever stuck, just try to write out the cross. So here I was writing out the cross, visualizing the single crosses, the middle cross or the double crossover and so forth. Uh, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I will do another video here going over a backwards three point test cross because you could come across those sometimes as well. So that's where I give you the interference and the map. And then can you calculate the expected number of progeny? So that'll be the next video I make. Uh, but with that, that's all I have for today. And I'll see you all in that video. All right. Bye-bye.